Quick and easy fish stock. Today I'm going to show you how to use the whole fish, making the most of your catch. And a little later on, I'm going to show you my three favorite recipes for this beautiful fish stock. I like to freeze all the heads and frames from the fish that I fillet and save them all up for a moment like this. Big old bag of goodies. Holy heck up. Too much for the part. Fish stock is an awesome way to make use of all those extra scraps of fish that you would normally chuck in the bin. You can use fish stock for so many things like risottos, soups, ramen, you name it, you can do it. Fish heads are an incredible source of omega-3 fatty acids, collagen, gelatin, and all sorts of other super valuable nutrients. Fish heads, especially bigger than this goat fish here, are also full of meat, and it's such a shame to see all of that go to waste. Grilled fish wings are some of my favorite things to cook, but on smaller fish like this goat fish here, it's quite fiddly to get around the bones, so often I'll use them in the stocks as well. They're also packed full of all of that collagen and those omega-3 fatty acids that we want to extract from the fish. The hot water is going to break these heads down completely, but I often like to cut them in half because for a little extra flavor, you can grill these to get a beautiful golden crust before you chuck them in the pot to simmer. The spine of the fish is also packed with all sorts of goodies, and there's usually plenty of meat left on it as well. Many people refer to this portion above the gut cavity here as a bloodline, but it's actually the fish's kidneys. And to remove any fishy or unwanted strange sort of flavors, we're just gonna make sure we remove this and clean it as best as possible. I find it easiest to scrape it out with a spoon or even the edge of your knife and wiping it off with some paper towel. The ribs are another portion of the fish that often just gets discarded. They do, however, have tons of meat and connective tissue all around them. Firstly, cleaning off any of that leftover kidney or bloodline area. We're gonna then remove them by inserting our knife underneath and sliding it up towards the pin bones and then cutting back down, finishing the cut towards the belly. Often when preparing a fillet to eat, I'll take out the pin bones as well. And while they're pretty insignificant in the scheme of things, I also just chuck them in my bone pile because why not? While I didn't use it in this preparation, another awesome thing to add to your stocks is the fish skin. Under the skin, there's an incredible concentration of those omega-3 fatty acids. And in species such as this goatfish here, they have this incredible orange oil under the skin, encapsulating all of these crustacean flavors from their diet. Because of these crustacean flavors, goatfish would have to be one of my favorite fish to use for fish stock. Plenty of other species are perfect for making stocks though. When selecting fish to use for stocks, my general rule of thumb is to use predatory fish. Fish that are eating crustaceans or other fish. I know some people don't mind using weed eating fish for their stocks, but for me there's just too much of a weedy kind of earthy flavor. Fish like this red rock cod or scorpion fish are perfect for stocks. These fish lie in wait amongst boulders ambushing anything that swims by. With a super wide mouth you can find all sorts of things in the stomachs of these fish. I've even found a whole octopus. Red rock cod have an incredible amount of fat and gelatin, not only in their head, but in their throat and the skin as well. Often referred to as the poor man's lobster for the sweet white meat in these fish, they're a welcome addition to any of my stocks. Their wings as well are full of meat and I almost equate it to something like a chicken thigh. I love eating these and you can check out my fried fish wing video as well. But sometimes, especially on the smaller fish, when I don't want to be eating around all these bones, I'll throw them into the stock as well. One fish I target specifically for making stocks and soups is Sergeant Baker. These fish have a reputation for being notoriously bony. They do, however, also have some beautiful meat as these are predatory fish. Processing them, I like to cut the bones out and this leaves a lot of scraps which are perfect for stock. I won't go into too much detail in this video, but if you're interested, I recommend checking out my red curry fish cakes recipe where I'll also run you through how to process these fish. Getting down to business, let's put our pot with all of the scraps on the stove here. And I definitely added way too much to this pot. I had a bunch of dramas later on with the pot boiling over and whatnot. So next time I'll definitely be doing at least two batches. If you've got a big stock pot like this as well that has a strainer that fits inside, that is perfect. It's gonna make your life so much easier later on when you go to strain off this stock. I didn't do it this time because everything was frozen, but often I like to fry everything off in the pan just so I can get a golden crust and develop some beautiful flavors before everything starts to simmer. 
I like to keep my stocks fairly simple from the get-go. Later on, we can add different flavors to them as we need, depending on what we're making. What I do like to add to all of my stocks is at least one brown onion. And I like to fry these first to get a little caramelly kind of crust on them. Often, I'll also add in up to a whole head of garlic. If you have the time, roasting this in the oven will bring a whole host of beautiful flavors to the table. Bring all of this up to a gentle simmer. We don't need much heat to extract all these beautiful nutrients and flavors from the fish. A lot of people refer to this foam on top as scum. Now scum seems to carry a lot of negative connotation, but what it actually is, is proteins, much like you would find in egg whites, and it comes from the meat. Personally, I'm not too bothered by this, so I'm not gonna bother to skim it, but if you're looking for an ultra clear stock, you'll probably wanna skim this off the top as it's simmering. After about an hour and a half to two hours, you can take it off the heat. You don't need nearly as long for these fish stocks as you do when you're making something like a pork broth. Here's where that strainer basket's gonna come in so handy. Once it's all cooled down enough to handle, but not quite to solidify, lift that strainer basket out and put it into a separate bowl. If you don't have access to a strainer basket like this, you can just pour it through a regular strainer a couple times, but it is a much slower process. Now that we've removed all of those bigger chunks and bones, we're gonna pour it through a finer strainer just to remove any of those lumps of proteins that have formed. All of it is edible, but the finer your strainer, the more you're gonna be able to remove these, leaving you with that pure stock. You don't have to use a big stock pot like this. You can make smaller amounts, but I prefer to make big batches that I can put into jars and freeze for later to use whenever I want. Especially in winter, it's really nice to be able to grab these out whenever you need for a quick and easy dinner. Just make sure you label your jars so you know when they went in. A cool trick I learned from Dobbers on Instagram, if you haven't checked him out, I definitely recommend that, is to wrap some masking tape around an elastic band and put that around your jar. Often the tape won't stick when there's any moisture on the jar, and it also saves all that sticky gunk you can get stuck on there sometimes. When you are looking for that quick and easy feed, you can't go past a good old ramen. You can really add and throw together whatever you want for this. But for the basics, we only need a couple of ingredients and a few small tweaks to our stock. First up, we're gonna prep some spring onions. And we're gonna cut off that root end first, and then also the leafy greens up the top, so we're left with some straight sticks. Slice into those lengthways, and then unroll the onion to be flat on the board. Run your knife down the length so we get some nice thin strips. Chuck them into a bowl, and then add some water on top. We're gonna put these in the fridge and they're gonna curl in the water. And this is gonna make for some beautiful presentation a little later on. Next up for potentially our longest part of this whole process, I'm gonna get some water boiling and throw in a couple of eggs. We're probably only gonna do one egg here, but I always like to do two just in case one doesn't quite turn out how we want. Now a good rule of thumb for a nice soft boiled egg is somewhere between six and seven minutes. So I'm gonna set a timer here for six and a half minutes. Taking our stock out here, you can see all of that gelatin has solidified. Now this one's only been in the fridge, but if you froze your stock as well, you don't need to defrost it, just break it up enough that you can get it out of the jar. Sometimes it helps to add a little boiling water into the jar and you can shake it all up and get every single drop out. To turn this simple stock into a beautiful ramen soup, we're gonna add some more flavors. I'm gonna start with some soy sauce here and then a drizzle of mirin as well. The beauty of ramen is you can do and add whatever you like. Some other ideas I've tried and liked in the past are sake, miso, and ponzu, but the possibilities are endless. Always remember to try it as you go so you know what to add and you don't overdo it. Here I like to add some mushrooms into the stock so they can poach for a little while. And I was lucky enough to find some fresh tataki mushrooms at my local supermarket. When you cook your mushrooms like this, they're gonna soak up all those beautiful flavors of the stock. With our timer going off here, let's take these eggs off the stove. It's super important here that we chill these eggs down as quickly as possible to stop them cooking. You can throw them into a bowl with some ice water or even just take them out of the hot water and run some cold water over them until they've cooled down. Let's get that pot back onto the stove and pour some water in there and get that boiling ready for our noodles in a second. Just before that though, I'm gonna throw some oil in a pan. I'm also gonna throw some salt in there. And remember how earlier I was saying I like to eat fish wings? Well, ramen is a perfect way to use some of your fish wings. Here I'm frying up some bonito ones and I'm gonna make sure this oil is ripping hot. We wanna get a nice crispy crust on that skin and fin side. When the oil's hot enough, the fins almost turn into crispy chips. My camera was bugging out a little bit here, but it's around now that you also wanna cook your noodles. With all of that prepared, let's take our bowl 
and I'm gonna first add my noodles into that. Then I'm gonna pour in my beautiful ramen soup with those mushrooms and add the other ingredients. Let's get it looking pretty with our curled spring onions here. And then we're gonna add a sprinkle of aonori and lastly some katsubushi as well. So there it is, that's our ramen. Fairly quick and fairly easy when you've already got that stock prepared and you're in a pinch. Now this next recipe definitely isn't quite as quick, but I can tell you what, it is certainly just as tasty. This is my Vietnamese inspired fish ball soup. For this one, we're gonna be using bonito. And let's take the fillets off, remove the ribs, and then slice the pin bones out, separating the loins. Skin these and then let's cube up our meat. For our balls, let's prepare some garlic and some ginger. I'm gonna leave this ginger whole and just peel it because we'll grate it as we add it into the food processor. Let's also prepare some lemongrass ready to be grated into the food processor as well. And lastly, let's tear off some coriander. I'm also gonna prepare some ginger and lemongrass to add to our stock while it's heating up. I'm only gonna rough chop these. We don't need them too fine when we add them to our stock. To season our fish balls, I'm gonna grind up some Szechuan peppers. In future, I'm definitely gonna to tone this back a bit. I definitely got a bit excited here and added a few too many. We're also gonna add some coriander seeds and salt to that. Grind it all up and then let's get the food processor out. Into the food processor, let's throw our fish, our seasoning mix with way too much Szechuan pepper and our garlic. Then let's grate in our ginger and lemongrass. Once that's done, I'm gonna add a splash of fish sauce sesame oil, and then a sprinkle of chicken bouillon powder. Lastly, an egg white to bind it all together. Blend all of that up, and once it's all combined, let's throw in our coriander. Chuck it on again very briefly so we don't completely pulverize it. Scoop the mix out and portion it up into little balls. I find a tablespoon here helps to create perfect bite-sized pieces. It also helps you to create that spherical shape. Once you're done with all of those, let's set them aside and then get ready to make our soup. Again, I'm gonna add some coriander seeds and Szechuan peppers to a mortar and pestle and grind them up before throwing them into a dry saucepan. With that, let's also add some star anise, some cloves and a stick of cinnamon. Let's toast that mix briefly and then add our stock on top. Once the stock is liquefied again, let's add in our ginger and lemongrass. We'll let that simmer for about half an hour. While we wait, I'm gonna chop some spring onions. Once that time's up, we're gonna strain off our soup. Pouring the soup back into the pot, we're gonna add in some shmeji mushrooms here and also our fish balls. Let's poach all of that for a few more minutes. While we're waiting for that, let's cook our noodles. And I only had wheat noodles on hand, but I'm sure a rice noodle would be beautiful with this soup. With those all cooked, strain them off and then let's add them to a bowl. Let's pour in some soup on top and then add our fish balls and some mushrooms. To dress this, I'm gonna sprinkle on our spring onions and add a whole bunch of coriander to the middle. So there it is, the Vietnamese inspired, definitely too much Szechuan pepper fish ball soup. I do love the flavor and the mouthfeel of those Szechuan peppercorns, but it is so easy to get overexcited and just use way too much. Lastly, and I'd have to say it's my favorite use for fish stock is to make risotto, especially when it's using go fish like I am here. I could give you a brief rundown of how I like to make this risotto, but I did recently make a video where I go in depth as to how I made this beautiful miso mushroom go fish risotto. So head on over and give that one a crack and let me know what you reckon. Don't forget guys, all of the kitchen gear and all of the dive gear and everything else that I use is always linked down in the description below. It doesn't cost you any extra, but it helps me to keep creating videos just like this. Fish stock is an amazing way to make the most of your catch and to utilize the whole fish. I hope you guys learned something today and I'm keen to hear if you gave it a crack.